Having an air quality sensor at home helps you monitoring indoor quality, ensuring healthier and safer living environment. Today in this video, we are going to use SGP40 air quality sensor and interface it over I2C using ESP32 S3 microcontroller which is deriving 2.8 inch TFT display over parallel interface. The dual core MCU that we are using reads the sensor data, processes it using Sensorion algorithm to obtain VOC index volatile organic compound and air quality measure and derives the LCD on separate cores using free artos operation system. The MCU prints the sensor data on the LCD with a nicely looking user interface designed with the help of LVGL library and Squareline Studio. We are going to learn about the surrounding air quality today, so let's put the show on the road. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features. They are currently celebrating their 10th anniversary with a lot of discounts and coupons. Check their website for more details. All right, so here's the setup that we are going to use uh, along this tutorial. You may have noticed that I have already used this display in the ultra wideband uh, tutorial where I've used it to show the communication distance between two ultra wideband uh, modules. Uh, anyway, so in this tutorial, I have this air quality sensor. Such sensor is actually used in purifiers and ventilation systems uh, for air quality measurement. So uh, let me make it a bit closer. Here, here's the sensor and here it's connected over the I2C bus to the MCU. So here's the back of the board. So here on this board, I have two slots for the I2C bus. Uh, I have uh, the air quality sensor connected to this slot. And actually I'm planning to connect humidity uh, and temperature sensor to this slot so I can view more information on the uh, screen. So let me put this back on its place. Okay, so currently the MCU is reading the VOC, a volatile organic compound data over I2C continuously and uses a Sensorion's powerful gas index algorithm in order to translate this data signal into VOC index uh, that can be used for air quality uh, measurement and the output of this algorithm is printed here on the screen so you can see that the VOC index right now is 131 and uh, depending on this value here I'm printing uh, some sort of a comment to uh, evaluate this data so the user interface that you can see right now is designed using square line studio uh, that uses LVGL library to uh, prepare and design uh, such a nicely looking user interface so here, as you can see, I have uh, designed this gauge that is a visual representation of the uh, VOC index data over here. And in addition to that, I have actually used uh, a gradient in the uh, background that shows a color uh, represent the air quality state. And here on this side, you can see the frame per second and the CPU usage. Actually, I've prepared the firmware to derive the uh, display on a separate core and drive the sensor on a separate core because the ESP32 S3 uh, has uh, two cores. Of course, I'm running free RTOS operation system. Actually, everything you can see over here and the algorithms uh, used are going to be discussed uh, when we go to the coding section. So keep watching until the end. So now for the sake of testing this sensor, I'm going to spray some perfume uh, around this board uh, and see how the air quality uh, is going to drop because uh, the sensor will think that it is uh, some sort of uh, pollution in the air. At this state you can see how the VOC index uh, is increasing. You can notice how both the value is being updated and the air quality comment is also updated and the gradient color is changing. You can see here the gauge value is increasing.
So the VOC index has a range between uh, 0 and 500 and currently we are reaching its boundary. So now you have seen how all the interface changes depending on the uh, VOC uh, data. So now let's have a look at the data being exchanged between the sensor and the hosting MCU. So let's dive into I2T bus and see all the data being exchanged there. All right, so here I have my logic analyzer hooked up to the I2C bus uh, lines. So you, here you can see the I2C clock line and the uh, serial data line. So now it's uh, sampling data. Okay, so uh, I will stop the logic analyzer from sampling. Uh, so here you can see that every eight seconds, uh, a sample is being read from the air quality sensor. So let's uh, zoom into one sample and see the exchange data over there. All right, so first of all, here we can see the R squared C uh, sensor address. And after that, here we see the uh, VOC raw data measure command followed by the humidity data uh, and the CRC of these two bytes. And after that, we have the temperature data uh, followed by the CRC of the temperature data. CRC is the cycle redundancy check used for uh, data uh, validation. So uh, here, the humidity and temperature values is passed as default value. So uh, I suppose uh, the temperature is 25 and the humidity is 50%. This is needed for the SGP40 sensor. Uh, to compensate for uh, the humidity and temperature. Currently, I don't have temperature and the humidity sensor on my board, but I'm going to add this in the future in order to get more accurate values. So uh, let me show you here an example of what we are doing over here. So this is the data sheet of the sensor with that we are interfacing. Uh, here you can see the command frames. So first we send the command, and then we have two bytes of data for the humidity, then the CRC of the data is sent. Here we have the temperature, two bytes of data, and we have here the CRC. And then we can do the read operation. So let's get back to our logic analyzer interface. And then here we see delay before reading operation because uh, that's necessary in order to read the raw VOC data. So here again, we see the I squared C uh, slave address. And then we, here we have the raw VOC data being transferred to our host MCU and then uh, this is the CRC uh, of this past value. So this data on its own uh, has no meaning because we need to insert this data to the Sensorion algorithm in order to uh, get the meaningful uh, VOC index so, so we can show it later on uh, on our display. All right, so now let's go to the sensor data sheet to get familiar with its uh, supported commands. So here we have the measure row signal of the uh, SGB40, the one that we have uh, seen on the logic analyzer interface. We have also execute self test uh, command. Uh, we have the turn heater off. When executing the row measure command, uh, the sensor starts heating itself by drawing uh, more current. So by executing this command, uh, you can reduce the current consumption on the, of the sensor. But of course, that will stop the sensor of uh, being able to read its uh, data. And uh, finally, we have the software reset. So if we have a look at the overall block diagram of the sensor, so here you can see that it has uh, its heater. This is actually necessary for the sensor controller to be able to read the uh, VOC value from the surrounding gas. And here's the sensor analog and digital conversion part, uh, which is uh, read by the uh, I2C interface. All right, so that's all. Now it's time to jump into the uh, ESP32S3 programming part. All right, so here's the firmware running on the ESP32S3. This is actually the same project that I've used in the ultra wideband, uh, where I've used that for communication distance uh, measurement. So uh, the parts that's related to the uh, display initialization is done in more details in that tutorial. You can watch that uh, if you want. So I will proceed from there. Uh, here I have, uh, this is the uh, backlight and the uh, display related GPIO 
pins initialization and here I have the SGP40 sensor initialization and then I have the related algorithm the sensorion algorithm initialization so let's jump into the initialization function and see what's inside so here you can see that the driver is designed in a way that uh, it takes the I squared C driver related functions so uh, this actually makes it uh, possible if you want to integrate this uh, sensor driver with another MCU so let's take this function as an example the I squared C write function so here I'm using the uh, ESP32 I squared C write function uh, so say that you have STM32 you will use uh, that function for that so after passing all the I squared C driver functions function null check is done first and then the SGP soft reset function is done. So here you can see that. So you here you can see that the related uh, soft reset command is passed, and then I squared C write command is done with the related SGP forty I squared C address. So that's all about the uh, sensor driver. So here we are in the main again. Uh, so after completing the sensor driver initialization, uh, the sensorion algorithm initialization is done. And there's one important thing that we need to pay attention to, and it's the sampling interval. So the sampling interval passed to the sensorial algorithm initialization should agree with the task running time. So notice that uh, this interval is in seconds, and our task where the uh, sensor reading is done runs at 8,000 milliseconds, so the time agrees. If we don't do that, there will be a problem in the uh, VOC row conversion process so here in this task which is the only task running in our program right now get voc data without uh, temperature and humidity compensation uh, command is done so if the reading operation is done uh, we run our algorithm passing the obtained value the row voc data so we can obtain the voc index and then uh, we can use that in order to update uh, our user interface over here so you will notice that inside the algorithm process function uh, the first values are discarded and they are not processed because uh, at that time the uh, sensor is being heated and its readings are not correct so uh, the first readings are uh, discarded uh, and you'll notice that uh, every 45 uh, readings i'm turning off the heater and software resetting it to make the reading process and the operation more stable and i found actually that by experiment and you'll notice that the calibration is done uh, after first uh, 45 readings so once the calibration is done the obtained uh, voc data will be sent to the user interface update function so here we see the lvgl layer uh, and all the user interface related functions actually uh, i'm thinking of talking about this part in the upcoming tutorial where i'm going to be talking about the user interface design where i've done it uh, using uh, squareline studio so i will show you guys in the next tutorial uh, the way i've designed this user interface and actually i'm thinking of uh, adding few more features this brings me to the end of this tutorial uh, actually all the materials related to this tutorial is shared uh, in the github repository uh, i will share a link into that in the video description so you can have a look at it work on it or maybe develop it uh, if you have learned something new today share this video among your friends and tell them about useful electronics see you in the upcoming tutorials and bye bye